In my previous video, I talked about the top 10 recruits from 2012, and Doriel Green Beckham was the highest ranked recruit in the nation that year, after he set the all-time national career receiving yards record. It was a record that had stood for 15 plus years. Then, just two years later, a kid down in Louisiana broke that record, which still stands today. Hi, my name is Trey Quinn. My favorite player is Derek Jeter. Since he was a kid, Trey Quinn was a star. He pitched a no-hitter in the Little League World Series when he was 12. From there, he continued to excel as an athlete. He entered high school a three-sport athlete, and in football particularly, he was dominant. He was the top freshman in the country in receiving yards, and by the end of his junior year, he really began to turn heads. He went on to put up over 2,100 receiving yards, which led the entire country. Offers began flooding in. Small schools, West Coast schools, SEC schools, but ultimately, the one school that truly mattered to Trey, that hadn't offered him yet, was his hometown team, LSU. Even with his ridiculous numbers, to get a scholarship to a school as big as LSU takes something special. You really gotta stand out physically. And Quinn, despite being talented, still needed to prove that he had the speed that would translate to the next level. Leading up to Quinn's senior year, he attended a multi-day football camp at LSU, where he was a standout in drills. And then came the ultimate test, the 40-yard dash. This could potentially be a make or break. If he ran something slower than 4.6, he was most likely off of LSU's radar, at least for a scholarship. Quinn reportedly dropped a blistering 4.39. This ended up earning him a scholarship, and shortly thereafter, he committed. Quinn, the future LSU football player, would confidently go into his senior year and put up another sensational season. By the time it was all said and done, his career receiving totals added up to an absurd 6,566 yards, the most all time, along with 70 touchdowns. Now, before we take a look at how his college career went, this video is brought to you by SeatGeek. Even though football season's over, there's still plenty of events, whether it's basketball, baseball, concerts, whatever it is. SeatGeek takes tickets from all across the web and puts them into one area, making buying simple. They place these tickets on a scale from one to 10, so you know when you're getting a good deal. Plus, first-time buyers can use promo code KTO at checkout for $20 off their first purchase. Shout out to SeatGeek for the sponsor. Now, let's dive into the video. It's been fun, but along with that, it's also been really tough, tiring, especially through the first week of camp. But uh, it's all about getting experience right now and learning, I mean, what the next level is like. The year before Trey Quinn arrived on campus, LSU had run an Air Coriel scheme, a heavy pass attack, which really utilized receivers Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham Jr., both of whom had achieved over 1,000 yards that season. This had to be exciting news to Trey Quinn, especially considering that both of those dudes had left for the NFL, and now, potentially, it was his turn. But considering those two receivers leaving for the NFL, along with the recruitment of number one overall prospect Leonard Fournette, the offensive scheme changed to a multiple attack, more so focused on running the ball, and LSU had a huge decline in passing production in 2014. They had gone down by nearly 100 yards per game, Trey did manage to play as a true freshman, which was an accomplishment in of itself. But with that being said, you're still held to the same standard as the other players out there. And Quinn did okay. He was mostly used as a second or third option in a limited passing attack, and also as a blocker. But things changed after the Alabama game. Following that game, Quinn was used much less in the offense, and this carried over to the following year. He barely got the ball, only managing to catch five passes as a sophomore. To that point, things just hadn't worked out at LSU. The scheme had completely gone to a focus on running the ball, 
And there's a lot of people who say that LSU's offensive coaching at the time was not very good, at least in terms of passing the ball. And the quarterback play wasn't exactly elite. So Quinn, along with another LSU receiver, decided to transfer following the season. This landed Quinn at SMU. SMU had a much heavier emphasis on throwing the ball. They must have convinced Quinn that he was going to be a major part in their offense because SMU was terrible the year before, boasting one of the worst records in major college football. After he sat out the one required year for transferring, Quinn stepped onto the field and things really changed. Hicks looked at him initially, now he comes back toward the middle. Quinn is there, touchdown Mustangs. Quarter, third down and 10. Hicks steps up, floats back in the end zone. Touchdown, SMU. Quinn was a monster statistically. He led the entire NCAA in receptions, which felt very similar to his high school success. Then, kind of surprisingly, Quinn decided to skip his final year at SMU to enter the NFL draft. This was a peculiar move because he was seen as a late round pick at best. So either he felt that his draft grade wasn't going to go much up or perhaps he was worried about getting hurt. Who knows? Now, after looking over his college career and then his NFL combine performances, I found something interesting. He ran a 4.55 in the 40 yard dash at the NFL Combine. This was noticeably slower than his supposed 4.39 that he ran at the LSU camp in high school. From the surface, this doesn't make any sense. A guy shouldn't be faster at 17 than he is at 21 with multiple years of high level speed and strength training. And with my understanding, here's the potential reason for this. Here's the thing about high school football. Pretty much everybody has their size numbers inflated. You're often listed at something a few inches taller than you really are, and 10 to 30 pounds heavier as well. So Trey Quinn most likely wasn't 200 pounds in high school. And for that supposed 4.39, it was most likely timed with the stopwatch, which has a ton of room for error. I believe there's a good chance that he received an incorrect 40 time. I bring all this up to highlight that if his size numbers and his supposed 40 and even 100 meter time from high school were true, he would have entered his freshman year as one of the most insane athletes in college. But with everything accurately measured at the combine a few years later, his NFL scouting report had him listed as a seventh round pick due to his physical limitations. But anyways, to get back to the story, Quinn was still a talented receiver. Funny enough, he was the very last pick in 2018, making him the Mr. Irrelevant of that year's draft. His NFL career got off to a rough start. He was constantly on and off IR for two years. He barely had any production as a rookie, and the peak of his career came in year two, when he was the team's seventh most productive player in the pass game. After that, he was waived following the season and only managed to play in one game since. Even though he is currently not on an NFL roster, at least the dude can say that he caught a touchdown in the NFL. In the process of making this video, I found it interesting looking at some of these high school all-time leaders lists, because many of them turn out to be like Trey Quinn or even less relevant. Kirby Moore has more career receiving touchdowns than any high schooler ever, and he was just average at best in college. Maddie Mock, the all-time leader in passing yards, had to transfer in college after losing the starting job at Missouri. Baron Jackson had 62 interceptions in high school, and he didn't even play defensive back in college. He was a receiver who barely got any playing time. But then you get to the career rushing yards leader, and this same exercise doesn't quite work. Henry again makes a cut, off and running! The Heisman winner in the open field, headed for the end zone! 